southeast of Bridger. Okay. I'm ready for you to both destroy color. <laughs> Don Williams is dead. Rest in peace. Powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm David Jay. Jay and Janelle are off tonight. Potentially the largest storm to ever hit the United States is close to the coast of Florida. Hurricane Irma is packing maximum sustained winds of 155 miles per hour as it careens toward the Florida Peninsula. Caribbean deaths from Irma are in the double digits, and destruction there is widespread. Florida officials are taking every precaution to prevent as much loss as possible. CBS's Kenneth Craig has more from Coral Gables. Shelters in Florida are filling up, and traffic is clogging roads leading out of the danger zones before Irma's dreaded arrival. We got water, we got food for a couple days, snacks, beef jerky, stuff like that. More shelters open Friday evening to help accommodate the 5.6 million people asked to evacuate. It feels rather comforting because uh, this is the safest place to be. Governor Rick Scott is warning procrastinators there's not much time left. Get where you need to go and do not wait. Irma is tracking slightly west, but the storm is so large it's projected to cover the whole peninsula. The National Guard is already out in force. My entire focus is just to make sure that everyone's safe and that we continue to help each other out. Because so much of Miami-Dade County is so low and flat, people are prepared for many areas to flood. Here in Coral Gables, nearly every business is boarded up. Central Florida's urban search and rescue is prepping its vehicles, boats, and crews, which just returned from Hurricane Harvey in Texas. I'm tired, and I uh, wish it wasn't coming. I would like to have a little rest, but uh, we're ready to go. We got rested up and ready to go. The U.S. Navy has four ships ready to assist with medical and logistic support. More than 20 million Florida residents are in Irma's path, a storm that's already left a trail of destruction in the Caribbean. Kenneth Craig, CBS News, Coral Gables, Florida. South Carolina's governor plans to order the evacuation of seven islands, including 40,000 residents of Hilton Head. 
When a Billings woman moved to Tampa, Florida, she never knew that her camping kit would help her face Hurricane Irma head on. Tiffin Crane just left Montana in April, and from one extreme to another, she said she had no idea what curveball Florida was about to throw her way. I don't know what to expect. I'm, I'm really scared, very anxious. We're, we're just kind of waiting. Everybody's just waiting on edge here. Tackling the stores were, were quite a sight. Um, all the food aisles were empty, things like uh, canned foods, they were all gone. Um, I finally got bottled water today. I have been searching for a few days for bottled water. Um, gas, we, we had to drive miles to get gas. It's, it's kind of crazy. And Tiffin says after the hurricane passes, her first plan is to start rebuilding and fixing her newfound community. Here in Montana, the Bobcat Pass fire about eight miles southeast of Bridger has burned more than 1,600 acres and is 30 percent contained. The fire started around 11.30 this morning, according to Larry Elder, the mitigation prevention specialist for the BLM's Billings Field Office. The fire burned sage, grass, and juniper close to the Bobcat Cats, uh, Pass Road, the Cottonwood Road, and Weatherman Draw. Elder says a large air tanker, a heavy air tanker, and single-engine air tankers uh, and 91 firefighters reached the 30 percent containment around 7 o'clock tonight. Firefighters from the BLM, Carbon County, Florida, and the East Coast all helped. Also, a Huntley man was transported by help flight to St. Vincent's emergency room after he was burned in a grass fire. The fire broke out around 3.30 this afternoon on South 6th Street in Huntley. Yellowstone County Sheriff Mike Linder tells us the 60-year-old man was burning trash in a barrel and flames got out of control. Fire spread into the grass and moved quickly to a nearby shop, then a camper trailer and two other structures. It was close to three homes that were not damaged. It's unclear whether the victim was trying to stop the flames or saving his belongings, but Linder says the man suffered significant injuries. Yellowstone County is uh, currently under a burn ban. And with critical fire watch uh, coming, uh, firefighters are bracing for a big day on Rice Ridge Fire. And in Lincoln, fears how the big fires in the upper Blackfoot could emerge. MTN's Augusta McDonald has more. Crews are prepping lines to contain expected Rice Ridge Fire activity north of Highway 200 with backburning and fuel removal. And so the next bunch will be over the next couple of days. We're looking at a cold front that may come in and I think this is the, the leading edge of it. And so we'd like to keep the fire low intensity, start here and work it down. And then when it gets closer to, to the road, we will start doing what we call hand firing. Between 4,500 and 6,000 acres will be back burned down to the 477 road. Depending on conditions, they may use hand or aerial ignition. This could happen before early next week. Seven homes and multiple other buildings are in the area and crews are taking precautions to protect those structures. Fire managers are using heavy machinery to create a fuel break on this side of the road along 19 miles of the 477 road in order to prevent the fire from making a run and potentially jumping this road and heading towards structures. The Montour Creek Guard Station and Montour Campground are also in the path of a southeast running fire. Flames approached within 200 feet of the guard station Saturday night, which is about eight miles north of Ovando. Crews continue to mop up areas that were torched over the weekend. Reporting in Sealy Lake, I'm Augusta McDonald for MTN News. And how far are you willing to go to protect your kids from the smoke enveloping western Montana? MTN's Eric Clements meets an Arlie mom who is so desperate for her toddler's safety she's sending her daughter to Wyoming. I have to evacuate my daughter so that she can breathe. That's the choice Sadie Chadwick felt she had to make. Evacuate her daughter, three-year-old Carly Chadwick, whose health is threatened by this oppressive, unrelenting blanket of smoke. The smoke's in our house. We can't keep it out of our house. We've got two air purifiers running all the time, but you can still you breathe in and you can just taste the smoke inside of our house. Carly will stay with her grandparents in Wyoming. It's a 16-hour round trip, but Grandma says she's happy to make it. My mom had been offering to take her for a couple weeks, and I was like, no, you know, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. And now she's waking up every night coughing so bad that she's not sleeping. I cough, and I can't go to sleep. I cough, and I want to sleep and stay asleep and close my eyes. And I keep coughing in morning. <clears throat> I run around 
and I try and cough really, really hard. And I sit up. Sadie isn't sure how long Carly will have to be away. She says that's the hardest part. So they're enjoying what could be their last mommy-daughter playtime this summer. I don't feel like I should have to send my child away to keep her safe. And though it's difficult, Sadie says it's a choice she won't regret, and she encourages other parents to do the same. If if you have an outlet to get your kids out of the city for, I mean, at least a few days or a week so that they can breathe a little bit better and clear their lungs, take it. I know that it's hard, but sometimes we have to make hard decisions as parents. As for Carly, she's looking forward to seeing her grandparents. I go camping and see the horses and see my grandpa. But she's going to miss mom. I need my, my mama and I need my sippy. Help me. Stop coughing. In Missoula. I love swimming in park. Eric Clements, MTN News. Turning to weather, we have watches, warnings, and some Severely unhealthy air. Bob's here from the yeah. Weather Center, and I'm not seeing a whole lot of clean air on that. Time. No, we no. There. We thought we'd start off here with the air quality around the state. Here in the Billings area, it actually has gotten worse in the last few hours. We Remember yesterday, we had good air quality. Now, in the yellow, in that little dot in Billings, that means we're already to moderate. And farther out in the west, it's getting really bad out there. Basically healthy to hazardous to unhealthy air and very unhealthy air. So let me show you what we still have working for us. This is that air uh, air quality alert for most of the western half of the state. It's basically for from Livingston all the way up towards Havern, all the way towards Idaho. It's just very bad out there, I and mean, that's because we have the unhealthy and hazardous air there. Plus, if that wasn't enough, look at this. We still got another red flag warning starting tomorrow at noon because we have a cold front sweeping through. It could kick off a lot more fl fires around the region and look for more smoky conditions across most of the west. Some of the smoke could even come here. We'll chat more about that in a few more minutes. David? Okay, thank you, Bob. More than 360,000 Montanans are now victims of Equifax's data breach. They're part of 143 million Americans whose personal information may have been stolen by hackers. Customer information was taken between mid-May and July. That includes names, social security numbers, credit card numbers, bank accounts, and any other personal documents filed with the company. The Federal Trade Commission has links on its site to, as to what you can do if you have been impacted by that hack. Up next on your Q2 10 o'clock news, another step was taken in creating improved trade relations between Montana and China. And in sports, Scott delivers high school football, volleyball, soccer, and golf, plus an update on your Mustangs in the playoff hunt coming up. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Green. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2. Montana's news leader.
powered by the Montana Television Network. The 10 o'clock news continues on Q2, Montana's news leader. The Chinese ambassador to the U.S. was in Montana today and met with Senator Steve Daines in Belgrade. MTN's Caitlin Corbett tells us how this meeting set the stage for future opportunities between China and Montana. Montana Senator Steve Daines hosted Chinese ambassador to the U.S. Shui Tingkai and members of the Chinese delegation here to the Morgan House Ranch. They engaged in a roundtable discussion along with stakeholders in Montana agriculture about Daines' work to end the ban on U.S. beef imports to China, as well as ways that they can work together in the future. People really like American beef, so now they have the opportunity. But of course, there's more. America, and especially Montana, can offer for China. After an outbreak of mad cow disease in 2003, China, the world's second leading beef importer, ended all U.S. beef imports. But Danes worked with China to end that ban in late 2016. And today, the senator, the Montana Farm Bureau, the Montana grain growers, and the Montana stock growers had a chance to meet with Chinese officials about other opportunities in agriculture beyond just beef. If we're going to grow our economy in Montana, we need to grow our agriculture community and our agriculture economy. And so by driving access to these markets, by shipping more beef into China, more grains into China, more sugar beets into China, it will increase jobs here in Montana, increase wages. That's a big win, and we need it so badly right now in Montana. And both Senator Daines and Ambassador Shui agree that working together will greatly benefit both sides. This kind of uh, mutual understanding and friendship between the two peoples are the real foundation for the state-to-state -state relationship between our two great countries. And just demonstrates the importance of the the person-to-person -person cooperation, the win-wins that can occur when we sit down as uh, two countries, as as two people and work out our differences and look at where we can uh, find opportunities to, uh, uh, to, to grow our economies together. Ambassador Shui and his delegation will be in Montana until Sunday, and they'll get to enjoy a tour of Yellowstone National Park tomorrow. In Belgrade, Caitlin Corbett, MTN News. Ambassador Shui and his delegation also met with Governor Bullock today. Up next in weather, Bob says in just a couple hours, it'll be the weekend and it's going to be a hot one. Check out your forecast next.
Now, here's your Storm Tracker weather forecast with Chief Forecaster Bob McGuire. That's right, it's Friday night in the big sky. Now, earlier in the evening, we were showing you some showers that are moving into western Wyoming and parts of southwest Montana. This is the way it looked in, in Clark, Wyoming. Tim Maxwell got this shot today. Had a little rain shower activity that kind of cleared out the skies a little bit from the thicker smoke they had. Also, here's another picture that Lynn Richardson got from Powell, Wyoming. They had a lot of smoke, too. It still got a little bit off in the distance. It's just, I think it's this tree here. You can't see it here, but that, that's where Hart Mountain is behind there, and it's just hard to see. But they still got a little bit of smoke in the area, but the, it has cleared out significantly there and they're in good news in that part at that part in that department. Meanwhile, let me show you what's happening in Billings. Not a bad night for us this Friday night. Say 78 degrees. Our wind is calm now. We have a little bit of smoke in the air, but it's not as bad as it was earlier on. And in the meantime, you can see 70, 87 degrees with our high temperature today. 77 is your normal high. The record 99 back in 1979. Record low was 32 back in 1962. No precip to talk about today or in fact this month so far. Here we are September 8th. Still haven't had any rain, but we're still ahead of normal 11.24, but normal is starting to catch up to us. It's at 10.36, so we'll see what happens. But in the meantime, our current temperatures are cooling off a little bit of Kalispell. They're in the 50s already over there. You see 70s back here, 68 of Butte. Across the rest of Montana, mostly into the 70s tonight. 79 in Miles City, Williston, North Dakota. They're at 69 degrees right now. Billings are at 78, 59 at uh, Sheridan. But these are our reported highs for the day. Look at all the 90s. Yes, it has been a really warm day again in eastern Montana. Out in the west, well, we've got a cold front getting ready to move in there. They were a little bit cooler, mostly into the 70s and mid-80s out there. Right now, Doppler radar shows you dry skies across most of uh, the northeastern corner of the state, but here we had some spotty showers making their way out of into Wyoming in the southwestern corner of Montana, but once these guys come up to the mountains and start coming down, they start falling apart. They just, just you got to have rising air to create thunder showers, not settling air, so that's what's happening tonight. We'll pull back a little bit farther and show you a big ridge of high pressure. That's been over the last few days. That's finally starting to slide a little bit towards the east. As it does so, it's been blocking the moisture from coming up, but now as it moves away, some of this monsoon moisture is making its way to western Montana and south central Montana. But let's move on down to Florida and show you what's happening down there. Take a look at this hurricane. There it is. You can see it. Here's the eye right here as it makes its way across the northern coast of Cuba. Now, what is this thing going to do? Well, let me show you. Here's our forecast. You see it's a Category 5 now. Maximum sustained winds are 160 miles per hour. Going to stay at Category 5 tomorrow morning. And then once it starts moving on shore sometime here, I think maybe time Saturday night gets here, it's going to roll back down to about maybe category four. It'll stay at four throughout the central part of Florida. And then by the time it gets to Jacksonville on Monday, it becomes just a tropical storm and then just a big old couple of low pressure cells on Tuesday evening. So I uh, will die down once it hits into the middle Appalachians. Meanwhile, back here in Montana, this is our big weather maker. This trough here has created some gusty winds in eastern Montana. Now it continues to slide out of the way tonight, but here comes that next cold front we talked about. It continues to move in from the northwest and it will continue to get close to us, but instead of dropping down into the building area. This high pressure cell is going to move up and kind of keep it away from us. So we might see some spotty sprinkles on Saturday night by Sunday night. Maybe a slight chance for some showers moving into the Billings area, but it's not a big chance. Meanwhile, tonight we cool back down to the 40s and 50s out west. Back here in the east, generally 50s and 60s here with clearing skies. Tomorrow we're back into the 90s one more time here in eastern Montana in the far west back up into the 80s or so. But as we take a look at our forecast for the next seven days, it'll be 93 degrees on Saturday, 86 on Sunday, 88 Monday. And then we get up to 91 on Tuesday. But look at this by Thursday and Friday. Slight chance of rain and temperatures only into the 70s. Let's go back to the desk. Okay, thank you, Bob. Scott Breen's here with sports and always exciting on a Friday night around here. Oh, this time you take your pick of sports. Yeah, and we always are heavy on football with Friday night action. Handful of blowouts tonight and Joliet trying to reach the 3-0 mark. Hosting Denton, Stanford, Geyser. Got it all coming up next.
Time now for MTN Sports Extra with Scott Green. Welcome to the weekend, everybody. Seeing you in Skyview tonight on the football field. Defending champion Bronx haven't been tested in two seasons. Falcons chasing their first win of the season. Pick it up in the first quarter. Bronx dressed in all black, already up 8-0. Nolan Askelson powers in from two yards out and a 15-0 senior lead. Second quarter, let's get to the air. Askelson hits Gabe Sulser in stride. He does the rest on a quick slant, 41 yards and a 22-0 Bronx lead. Skyview then gets on the board. Later first half, Brock Bushfield airs it out. Looking for Jared Schaff. How about a 24-yard strike right on the money, corner end zone. Falcons within 22-6, but next senior possession. Askelson dials it up deep this time. How pretty is that ball? There's Solser again, gone, 61 yards, 26 to 29 to six at halftime, and you see the final tonight, 32 to 14.